Like you're a raw vegan. Yes, I am. And for how long now? Uh, well, I've been doing this now for about 18 years. 18 years. So pretty much 100% for 18 years. A couple of years ago, I experimented with some cooked food. And I think that's okay for people. But for me, the raw vegan way, it gives me the most energy and I feel amazing. Uh, first, he can show me in the Bible where it's okay to eat animals. The Bible says it's okay, and I, I read that, and it clearly says it's okay, but if you eat them kosher and so on. So I'm a raw vegan, and I do fine. If somebody wants to eat animal products, if they eat healthy animal products, it'll be okay. Most of the people eat eating unhealthy, and that's the problem. So I found a, a healthy way to do it with the raw milk. I experimented with it, and I didn't get the same problems that I got from the drug up there. But I decided I felt better without that, so I don't do that. I have an issue with people that say I'm not going to marry somebody if they eat animals or if they're not raw, if they don't eat exactly like me. And uh, I think kids need to be raised healthy, but when we look at perfection, uh, it's something we got to be really careful with. And I don't think a 100% raw vegan diet is the ideal way to do it on an emotional level for, for people. On a diet level, if people can handle it and be happy, great, but if they can't be happy, then it's not worth it. I like that. I like how you kind of, um, in a way, you do your thing and others do their thing, and that's okay for, for food. For everything, that's really okay. I mean, as long as me and my wife, we stick to biblical principles. And as long as we stick to what the Bible says about things, I'm going to give her a freedom to do what she wants to do. And if, she, if we have a disagreement, we'll take it to the Bible and come to an agreement. For us, and other people might feel different, but for my family and me and my wife, we want to base our life on the principles of Yeshua Messiah. And we feel great about that, and it's helped us connect because we have that important thing in common. Okay, now what's the uh, the story of the beard? Is that just where you save your your raw foods, or <laughs> what, what's that, what is it? Well, I, I talk a lot about this obsession we have with shaving in this country, and in my research, shaving is not healthy. And for the last 20 years, I've had a beard on and off, and any, whenever I was clean shaven. It was a lot more work and I just didn't feel as good. Well now I've done the research and I found out and I know you're going to ask me and everyone's going to ask me what's so bad about shaving and what's so unhealthy about it. Well it's not like you're going to get a disease if you're shaving, but our Creator wanted us to have hair on our bodies. And I don't believe it's healthy for men or women to be shaving on a regular basis. It creates a lot more stress and there's now studies to show on hormonal level it can, it can mess with us and everything else. The hair is supposed to be there. Every man grows a beard. I just stopped deciding to destroy it on a regular basis. Wow. And this is what I got. Yeah, I don't like shaving to my skin. I like just trimming. I shave a little bit up here because I, I, I feel like I look a little caveman that's my hair goes kind of high. Yeah. Basically, <laughs> basically what I tell people like when I go to the, to the airport and so on, they, they look at me and I look at my clean shaven driver's license and they say, what happened? I said, I woke up late so I didn't get shaved today. <laughs> uh, that's what uh, I'm but really, uh, I don't make that much money. I don't make that much money with what I'm doing, but what really happens is the other day I was on the street in the city and I put my hand out to see it was raining and somebody put a dollar in my hand. So I know this, uh, you know, and that's uh, a good joke. Is that a good know, story then? I always, actually, people think I'm homeless. I say, no, I only eat like a homeless person because they eat frugally and they don't overeat, which is important. Frugal. But when I go on a plane, you know, I like to fly southwest and they let you pick your own seat. Okay. But between my beard and my baby, I always get an empty seat next to me. Uh, so there's a lot of advantages. Do they really let you pick your own seat on southwest? Yes, they do. Like yeah. when you get on the plane? Yeah, you can sit wherever you want Are on the plane. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh, wow. I've never flown them. Now, now you've intrigued me. Yeah. But I always have to get to the airport early because they always pull me out of line. I can't figure out why. I can't put my hand on <laughs> Uh, you mentioned something about hormones and it got me thinking about what since you've uh, been a long-term raw vegan, what do you think happened to us on our hormone levels? Because one of the main things that kind of deterred us away from eating a strict raw vegan diet was that we felt like we were losing our testosterone, that we were losing our like ability to put on muscle mass and stay strong, like be as strong as we possibly can and even think as clearly as we can. And sure enough, we got the blood test and our, our testosterone was low. Sure. And, uh, what, what's your opinion? Well, uh, I was, when I was younger into this, into the...